Question eight, part eight. Compare the relative acidities of ethanol, ethanoic acid, chloro ethanoic acid, and phenol. So now we have four different compounds with different acidities. So which one is the most acidic? Because now we have two carboxylic acid. So it. Uh, that is the uh, ethanoic acid and the chloro ethanoic acid. So ethanoic acid is this one. Chloro ethanoic acid is this one. So which carboxylic acid is more acidic then? So of course, the one with chlorine is the more acidic carboxylic acid because the acidity of this carboxylic acid. It depends on the electron withdrawing groups. For the ethanoic acid, it has one electron withdrawing group here, the carbonyl. And for this chloro ethanoic acid, it has two electron withdrawing groups, which is the carbonyl and the chlorine. And these extra electron withdrawing groups able to further weaken the OH bond here. Therefore, it's easier for this OH bond to break and form the H plus. So means the concentration or the numbers of hydrogen ion form is small, then is more acidic. So that's why the most acidic you must put. Chloro ethanoic acid followed by ethanoic acid, and for this uh, phenol, why is less acidic than ethanoic acid? Because the acidity of phenol is depends on the lone pair that delocalize in the ring, so it's not really because of the electron withdrawing groups. So therefore, the effect is not really as great as the carbonyl and the chlorines here. So, for this delocalization, the phenol, as you can see here, the lone pair on the uh, oxygen will delocalize into the benzene ring, and of course, the OH bond will get weakened. But the weakening effect is not as great as this. Carboxylic acid. These two carboxylic acid, because the electron withdrawing is has a greater effect. So, the OH bond here is much weaker than this OH bond. So it will form more H plus. Uh, that's the reason why phenol is less acidic than the carboxylic acid. So after that, why the ethanol is the least acidic? So you have to understand, the ethanol itself. Okay, it has the ethyl groups, and this ethyl group is electron donating. So means it will push electrons to other side. So in this case, is to the OH. So. The OH bond now is get strengthened, means it gets stronger because the electron density is more. So when this bond is get stronger, then it's harder to break, and it will form lesser H plus. So that's why the ethanol is the least acidic one. So this is a comparisons that you must know between the compounds, which one is more acidic. So first again, you must give the cor correct trend. Most acidic is chloro ethanoic acid, followed by ethanoic acid, and after that phenol, and the last one is ethanol. So you just explain like what I told you just now. The chloro ethanoic acid is more acidic than the ethanoic acid because the chloro ethanoic acid is has The electron withdrawing group chlorine. So, the OH bond therefore is get further weakened, and you form more H plus. 
And why ethanoic acid is more acidic than phenol? Because of the electron withdrawing group. And this electron withdrawing group so is able to weaken the OH bond, more H plus form. Or you can say that the electron withdrawing groups means the carbonyl able to stabilize the anion. So what did this mean? Let's say now we look at this uh, ethanoic acid. After this bond break, it will form this uh, carboxylate and uh, uh, hydrogen ion. Because of these electron withdrawing groups, the carbonyl, it can let this electron density get lesser. Right? So it will pull electrons toward itself. And therefore, the electron's density on the oxide is lesser so means this one is less likely to react with H plus form back the acid so that's this we call stabilizations effects because of this electron withdrawing group it's let this electron density lesser so it's less likely to react with H plus so we say that this carboxylic acid is stabilized by this group carbonyl now that's the meanings of stabilized station or the stabilized anion so phenol why is more acidic than the ethanol uh, then you can say the lone pair on oxygens delocalized in the ring and eventually the oh bond get weakened and is formed more h plus than the ethanol so again ethanol why is the least uh, acidic because it has alkyl group which is electron donating and it strengthened the OH bond. Part B. An excess of ethane dioic acid, this is a dicarboxylic acid, reacts with warm acidified k 4 So this one is obviously an oxidation reaction. So remember, for the carboxylic acid in the syllabus, Two carboxylic acid can be oxidized. Uh, one of the carboxylic acid is the methanoic acid. So methanoic acid can be oxidized by the Tolens reagent, Felix reagents, uh, the mild oxidizing agent to form CO2 and H2O. Another carboxylic acid then can be oxidized is this one, ethane dioic acid. And this one only can oxidize by KMnO4, acidified KMnO4. So now, um, uh, what is one? State the type of reactions undergone by this uh, ethane dioic acid. Describe what you would observe. Write the equation. So means all together now. The first one, type of reaction. Of obviously, is an oxidation. Uh, it's better for you to say that oxidation of this ethane dioic acid. Ob observation is. Because we use acidified KMnO4, this is purple color. After this one oxidized others, itself will get reduced. So it reduced to Mn2 positive, and this is colorless. So therefore, observation is from purple to colorless. Equation, uh, you can give the simple one, like this. Ethane dioic acid reacts with oxidizing agent. Uh, in this case, is the KMnO4. And after it's oxidized, it will form CO2 and H2O only. If you want to give an ionic equation which involve KMnO4, you can give this uh, answer. So you have to construct two half equation, something like this. The ethane dioic acid, it will form CO2. After that, you have to balance the carbon number times 2. So oxygens and carbons now is balanced. So you need to balance the hydrogens number by adding H plus on, on right hand side. So add 2 H plus and add 2 electrons, balance the charge. Okay, so this is a half equation for ethane direct acid. 
and you can construct another half equation which involves the KMnO4. KMnO4 will reduce to Mn2 positive, so you balance the oxygen by adding H2O, so add 4 H2O, so oxygen now is balanced, 4 on left, 4 on right. So now you need to balance the hydrogen, so here on right hand side, 8 hydrogen, so you have to add 8 H plus here. So at the end, you balance the charge. So this side plus 5 electron, then both sides, okay, the charge balance and the elements balance. So after that, you have to combine these two half equation. So the first half equation times 5, second half equation times 2. Make sure they have 10 electrons later. So later, after times 5, it becomes 10 electron. Here also 10 electron. Okay, so sum up left to left, right to right, you get this overall equation. Uh, of course, this one acceptable, this one also acceptable. Part C. A section of polyester is shown. So this is a polyester, and uh, you have to observe this uh, carefully uh, to get the correct monomers. Because in this question is asked, draw the structure of two monomers for this polyester. So we start from the um, the ester bond. So let's say this ester bond break, the carbonyl will get OH and the oxygen will get H. Uh, this is hydrolysis of the this uh, polyester. So means this oxygen will get H from OH and this ester bond break, this carbonyl will get OH to form carboxylic acid. Uh, you can put chlor chlorine also can. So therefore, this part, after it's hydrolyzed, so it will form this molecule. So this is a monomose, one of the monomoles. Okay, now we look at another side. So this oxygen also from the ester, uh, this oxygen get hydrogen and this carbonyl get OH. So this part will form another monomer, this one. So from this monomer. So this monomer, you can draw the skeleton like this, this one. So it's actually the uh, same thing, right? So you can draw the skeleton or you, you draw this, no problem. And of course, this one, this monomer, okay, you can draw the skeleton, something like this. Okay, OH, CH2, COOH. Right. So this one is OH, CH, CH3, COOH. Right, this one. So these are the two monomers that form this um, polyester. Again, you can give the acyl correct means uh, instead of OH, you can put chlorine here, no problem. Part D. Serine can polymerize to form two different types of condensation polymer, a polyester and a polypeptide. Polyester, it needs to use the COOH and OH, this one and this one. If polypeptide, it need to use this one, COOH and this one. So it can form two different uh, types of uh, condensation polymer, right? Now the question asking, draw the structure of the polypeptide showing two repeats units. So this is very clear. Polypeptide means you need to use a COOH and the NH2. Means this one and this one. So now it's, uh, it's uh, very easy to draw the structure. First, you need to follow the arrangement. Since the polypeptide form, you must put the um, this amine and carboxylic acid on different side means this one on left then another one on right so 
then you put another monomer here put the amines on left and the carboxylic acid on right so the carboxylic acid and the amine will react and undergo condensation uh, reaction so H2O will remove here and the new bonds will form the C and the N new bonds will form so we will form these uh, amides or peptide bond so of course you no need to really draw this this one no need you just need to draw this structure this structure so because it's asked to repeat unit means uh, two uh, amino acid residue means uh, this is one repeat unit this is another repeat unit so you must show this uh, amide bond and this repeat unit and this repeat unit Rem remember to put tails here so means uh, you must show the NH and the N with one bond one tails and the carbonyl with one tails so this is the the polypeptides right from these uh, amino acids explain part E explain why condensation polymers normally biodegradable or it can be degraded readily than addition polymer very easy uh, the the answer is always this because they have the amide bond and the ester bond right polyester so if let's say the compound they have uh, the amide bond or ester bond so it can be easily hydrolyzed so when it can be hydrolyzed means it's uh, readily uh, to be degraded or biodegradable so that that's the 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 answers right that's all thank you